Are you falling short on mercy? Talking about being forgiven, Jesus continued. When some of the other servants saw that the servant who had been forgiven a tremendous debt didn't forgive another servant who owed him much less, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Matthews 18, 31 through 33. Key thought. Mercy. More than an exclamation, it is the reason for an exclamation. Mercy, sweet mercy. It is the gift of freedom from our past, our failures, our wickedness. But it is a gift because in receiving it, we acknowledge that we have received something we didn't deserve and that we received it without the person giving it to us, expecting us to grovel. Mercy, oh mercy. But more than just the reason for an exclamation and joy, mercy is our gift to share. Mercy has not completed its redemptive work until it's passed on, until we see the joy of another being granted his or her freedom. Mercy is essential in God's kingdom. Mercy is music in God's family. Mercy is the basis of our hope. Mercy is the gift of God we are to share with others. So when we cry out to God, Lord, have mercy, let's remember that cry and extend that same gift of mercy to everyone we encounter and invite them to your local house of worship and see that God is more than good. Let us pray. Merciful Father and Almighty King, thank you for delivering me in your grace and saving me by your sacrifice and including me in your family. By your mercy, may my life be a conduit of your mercy to others. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen.